can leave. Very well. She's doing it again. But the closer she comes, the better we can reach her. Can you buy us some time, Chief? Hi folks, this is Tavia Sobi, and today... Today I'll show you how to beat Wild Heart's big crazy chicken itself, Amaterasu. I guess you can call Amaterasu Wild Heart's El Pollo Loco. <laughs> yes, Amaterasu is part of Wild Heart's tradition of serving up crazy annoying birds for players to deal with. Let's just say this bird is unsafe even at 165 degrees Fahrenheit, or 75 degrees Celsius for you folks on the metric system. Now, Amaterasu might seem impossible at first, but... It's actually not that bad once you learn its patterns. It basically just tracks like a guided missile and hits super hard, so it's easy to get two shot when you make a mistake, or even one shot depending on your armor. This makes it super important to make sure that you're properly geared for this hunt, that is, unless you like getting your goose cooked by a burning bird. Now, a little preparation goes a long way in turning the Amaterasu hunt from a near impossible chicken dance to a more manageable turkey fry. Let's go over some key tips. At the top of the list is to update your armor. Ideally, you want to be wearing Mighty Class Armor, which is Wild Heart's equivalent for high rank armor in Monster Hunter. And so prior to the Amaterasu hunt, you will unlock hunts against various mighty monsters whose armor provide higher defense than those made from their regular versions. If you want something that works well and is relatively easy to farm, my recommendation would be the high rank Basara set from Mighty King Tusk. It provides added wood element protection, which is Amaterasu's main element, and the big pig uses most of the same patterns of its regular counterpart with the exception of a few moves, like its head sway getting an extra attack via a ground pound that summons giant vines, for example. Just be careful since it hits much harder than a normal King Tusk. You can also check out my video on how to beat a regular King Tusk in case you need a refresher course against this particular kimono. Now, you can actually get away with using low rank armor in this hunt if it's from one of the stronger monsters in the game. Like for me personally, I used the lower rank version of the Ice Wolf Deathstalker's armor. And then also crafted the upgraded pieces from the Kimono Path, I think. At least most of them. I believe I was still missing the helmet. But the armor's defense is still pretty close to the early Mighty Class armor. And it also has some wood element protection, though not as high as the Basaras. Yeah, so if you want more wood, go Basara. Because when it comes to Amaterasu, more wood means less problems. Actually, that doesn't sound quite right. <laughs> Uh -huh. More wood. Get your minds out of the gutter. The next tip is to not forget to equip your talismans. It's actually easy to kind of forget about these things and not even change your talisman loadout, which is a big mistake. So talismans can provide extra buffs or skills that can help you in any hunt. Also note that you can equip more than one. And I say that because I actually played the game I think all the way to Deathstalker with only one talisman equipped instead of multiple, which needless to say was a wasted opportunity. The lesson as always is... I'm an idiot. And then up next is to craft the strongest weapon that you can at this point. You will want a weapon that either has the wind element, which is Amaterasu's weakness, or high raw attack. In my case, I ended up going for higher raw since the wind element upgrade on the path I chose for my weapons required a part from a venom glider, I believe, which does not officially unlock until chapter 4. And I wasn't exactly in the mood to search for it early in Haragasumi Way. And then if you're having a tough time with this fight, my recommended weapon would be the bow. The bow can actually hit Amaterasu more easily, especially when it's doing its build-up moves in the air, so it's pretty good for any flying monster. By the way, if you're having difficulty aiming with the level 2 bolstered Haya shot, I recommend pushing the right stick forward, which actually flattens the arc of the shot, so this might help with your target. Otherwise, if you stand right next to the monster and clip it with your body, it will actually make all your Haya shots hit 100%, which always puts a smile on my face. And then another tip is to make sure you don't forget to eat prior to the hunt. I mean, every little bit helps against Amaterasu, whether it be extra damage or extra HP. Even the extra HP buff you get from something as simple as eating 5 millet before the hunt can actually spell the difference between being one shot or staying alive in order to heal yourself. And then you'll also want to bring a Karakuri loadout that can help cancel Amaterasu's attacks. So you're kind of locked into bringing the spring and then the stake as part of the story, so you can unlock the harpoon during this fight. The Harpoon is actually one of the best Dragon Karakuri for interrupting Amaterasu's big moves and bringing the bird down sometimes. However, until you're able to get that flash of inspiration to unlock the Harpoon during the middle of the fight, you can rely on Dragon Karakuri such as the Repeater Crossbow, the Pounder, and if the Kimono is underground, the Chain Trap, in order to stagger or cancel Amaterasu. 
and then provide yourself a window for counter-attacking as well. And then if you're playing solo, which I like to do when I'm clearing a monster for the first time, it's always a good idea to bring your Karakuri assistant, Tsukumo, because the little guy can literally be a lifesaver, providing heals, celestial thread, and also distracting Amaterasu if you get hit hard and then need to heal. In fact, one time I was playing solo, and Tsukumo even knocked out an enraged Amaterasu after hitting it with one of those Karakuri blocks for like 6 points of damage. <laughs> good job, little guy! Now before I break down Amaterasu's patterns and attacks in death, let's go over some basics about the flow of battle. Now while individual patterns for Amaterasu are certainly important, it's also important to think of the fight in terms of the kinds of openings that Amaterasu provides. So you can classify those under three categories. So you have your small or quick openings that provide opportunities for quick hits, or in the case of a bow for example, level 1 bolstered Haya shots. And then you have your big openings, which provide opportunities for big hits, including longer combos, charged attacks, or in the case of the bow again, level 2 bolstered Haya shots or maxed out Otoya charge shots. And then the third category is Amaterasu's charging build-up moves. And by charging, I mean Amaterasu charges or gathers energy for a long time while staying in the same spot. These typically need to be countered with Dragon Karakuri, like the Harpoon, and then followed up with big attacks from your weapon. That pretty much is the basic flow of combat against Amaterasu, and you want to respond appropriately, not just to maximize your damage, but also to make sure that you don't overextend yourself during a small opening, and then get stuck mid-combo, then wombo comboed by Amaterasu, and then take giant enemy crab, or I guess in this case enemy bird, damage. Also important is that you can use the nearby houses and structures to block Amaterasu. These include your actual hunter house, which you can actually go inside in order to catch a breath and then heal in peace. Now while the structures block almost all of Amaterasu's attacks, that move where Amaterasu sends red feather darts that home in on you can actually still go through gaps between the structures and damage you. So just keep that in mind. Going into one of these structures also resets Amaterasu's positioning if you're playing solo, or if I guess all of you go inside a house, which I guess is good to know in case you want to cheese it. Now if you go inside your actual hunter house, Amaterasu will usually go north and then stand there. And then if you go to the opposite side in one of the structures over there, Amaterasu will usually go south and then stand there. Also keep in mind that it's easy to get stuck in the crevices and other sections of these structures, largely due to Wild Heart's wonky collision settings. So it might take a bit of effort to get stuck if this happens to you. Mobility is also important in this fight, so you'll want to make sure you have enough stamina to do two slides in a row, or set down Karakuri like a spring so you can dash in a flash. Hey, that rhymes! Also make sure to have enough Celestial Thread available, and not just spam them willy-nilly, so you can counter its dangerous moves with a harpoon or bulwark when you need to. Climbing Amaterasu's body when it has an exposed weak point, and using your hunter arm on it is also a great way to build up your Celestial Thread count. And like with a lot of monsters in this game, playing with others can actually make this hunt much easier. That is unless you get an undergeared hunter who gets one shot all the time. Otherwise the extra bodies can give you breathing space and allow you to inflict damage when Amaterasu is targeting others. The ability to revive allies also means mistakes don't necessarily doom your fights. You can set up a harpoon or bulwark next to you for extra security to make sure that you can safely finish reviving a fellow hunter. Speaking of friends, Minato citizens will actually help you by attacking Amaterasu with a long-range weapon. This will usually stun the monster and leave you a big opening in a counterattack. Also, don't forget to pick up Amaterasu's broken parts mid-hunt so you can at least keep them even if you fail the mission. Now let's go over Amaterasu's individual patterns and moves. A first is the Beak Pound. So this is a close-range move and Amaterasu rears its head and then it sways it in a counterclockwise motion and then slams its beak down into the ground. This is really close range and you usually won't see it if you're playing with the bow, but if you're playing with a melee weapon, then that's when you'll usually see it, especially if you're standing in front of it. But it's pretty easy to dodge. After that is the 1-2 swipe. This is another close range move where Amaterasu stands on the ground and then uses both wings like a 1-2 punch. This is actually pretty easy to avoid as well, and you just need a little bit of distance. When using the bow, I actually sometimes try to bait this move by standing in front of Amaterasu, since it actually gives you a pretty nice opening. Then up next are the front feather darts. So basically Amaterasu uses both wings to send out feather darts in a V-shaped pattern in front of it. This one is easily avoided by dodging to the side. After that is the double feather dart attack. This is a medium range move where Amaterasu, while airborne, raises its right wing and then sends feathers raining down and then repeats that a second time with its left wing. I guess you can call it a bipartisan attack. <laughs> So if you're in range while facing Amaterasu, just dodge right and then left. Otherwise, it can be avoided by backing up if you're far enough. 
And then keeping up with the feather dart theme, you have your homing feather darts. This is a long range move where Amaterasu spins and sends a single wave of feathers that are charged with red aura and a fan shaped pattern. The best way to avoid this is to dodge at the last second. So you gotta have a bit of discipline. If you're panicking and you dodge too early, you are going to get hit. However, if you time it perfectly, even a normal dodge with your weapon out will still avoid it. So as long as you time it right, you can dodge this sideways or even backwards. This can actually be a stressful move to deal with because it tracks really well. And while it won't necessarily kill you, it can set you up to get wombo comboed. So just make sure to watch out for it. You'll know that this is coming because Amateur Su will be airborne and then turns its back. So as soon as you see the monster turn its back, you know that this move is coming. Amateur Su also has a talon swipe. So from the air, it'll fly downward and then scrape the ground with its talons. So just dodge away from it. Up next is a move that Amaterasu loves to spam, which is the air dash. So basically from the air, Amaterasu rushes toward you, and then there are several versions of this actual move. One is a normal dash that can hit you once or multiple times, especially if Amaterasu is powered up. Keep in mind that the multi-hit version can actually KO you if you're not at max health or if Amaterasu is enraged, or if you're using substandard armor too. Now if you get hit by the first move, be careful with your timing when you're standing back up because you're going to be helpless and then get hit by the next move, which most likely will KO you. And then the other version of this attack is actually a grab move where Amaterasu will lead with its claws and then if it connects, Amaterasu will pick you up with its talons and then throw you into the ground. Now while this one is fairly easy to avoid, it hits hard for big damage if it connects, so you'll definitely want to be on the lookout for it. You'll know it's coming when Amaterasu raises both wings and lets out a cry while airborne, and you can easily avoid it by just dodging sideways. Make sure not to avoid it by dodging backwards, because it'll still catch up to you. You can actually use a bulwark to block this, or even a chain trap, but the chain trap has to be like positioned perfectly for it to work. And then another favorite move of Amaterasu is the airdrop slam. So while standing on the ground, Amaterasu kicks up and flies straight up high into the air while letting out a cry, and then drops down and slams the ground with force. This is easy to avoid with just about any kind of dodge, but it can track and hit its target from anywhere, and that is as long as you're out in the open, so you'll definitely need to be paying attention to it. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to anticipate, because Amateur 2 basically disappears from the screen, and once that happens, you know it's coming. I actually love this move because it leaves a big opening that you can use to hit Amateur 2 hard. Just remember that if Amateur 2 is enraged, it will actually do this twice in a row, as opposed to just once, and it also does way more damage. By the way, if you're standing near a bulwark, the bulwark will actually stagger Amaterasu if it tries this move on you, provided the bulwark is still at full strength and doesn't just get destroyed. And then you can also bait Amaterasu into a chain trap during this move. Another move that you'll see a lot of is the green aura buildup. So Amaterasu starts building up green aura in order to store energy in its wings, and you'll definitely want to cancel this as it can power up Amaterasu. At the same time, this is one of your opportunities to inflict big damage, so make sure to take advantage of it. Once you've unlocked the harpoon, you can actually use that to cancel this move and hold Amaterasu in place for a while, especially the first few times you use it. Otherwise, if you haven't unlocked the harpoon yet during the battle, a repeater crossbow can cancel this, and then a pounder or nodachi charged hit to the head will sometimes stagger Amaterasu as well. Even climbing the monster and breaking a weak spot will actually cancel this move as well. And then if you're playing multiplayer, using the pounder is actually a good option for extra damage if you already have someone setting up a harpoon. The only thing with the pounder is that you'll need to be pretty close, so you'll need to watch out for the small green pillars that Amaterasu generates within the green pool underneath it, because that can actually cancel your move. And then once you do enough damage, you can actually enrage Amaterasu. This one is pretty easy to spot, because Amaterasu will build up golden energy while in mid-air, and usually this is actually preceded by a green buildup. And then you'll know Amaterasu is getting enraged because trees start to grow around you, and then the screen turns black and white. After that, Amaterasu will do a discharge of energy, and then you'll see some aura bubbling from its body. This actually powers up Amaterasu, so be extra careful when the bird is enraged. Amaterasu also usually starts entering this state during the second half of battle, and that's when Amaterasu starts using a bunch of other moves. These include the Ring Dash, where Amaterasu generates a halo around it, and then it charges forward while leaving a trail of golden rings. Amaterasu will usually do this twice in a row, and then slam down on the ground. My advice is to dodge sideways to avoid the first one, and then keep going the same direction and dodge that way again. 
So if you dodge to the right the first time, make sure to dodge to the right the second time as well. Because what I've noticed is if I go right and then dodge left for the second attack, sometimes it actually hits me. Whereas if I keep dodging the same direction, I never get hit. This also leads to a very nice opening if you successfully dodge it, so get ready to counterattack. And the next is the Ground Bird Blast. With this move, Amaterasu will look down while its mouth glows, and then rear its head upward while a halo forms on its back. This will then be followed by a shotgun blast of golden energy that forms this big shining ball. You'll just need to create enough separation away from Amaterasu to avoid this one. Amaterasu always likes to link this as a combo move, so basically a finisher, so always be on the lookout for it. Up next is the Aerial Bird Blast. So this is like the ground bird blast, except of course Amaterasu does it from the air. This one covers a lot of ground, so make sure to create enough separation, or you could also just iframe dodge it if you can't get far enough. Yeah, the iframes in this game are a lot more generous than Monster Hunter, so you can actually iframe dodge a lot of stuff. And then the next move is the Sideways Bird Laser. This one starts out like the Bird Blast, but instead of a shotgun blast, Amaterasu tilts its head to the side and then does a sweeping laser beam. This then creates a trail of golden circles on the ground that explode into pillars of energy. Naturally, you'll want to make sure you're not stepping on them. Amaterasu also likes to finish this move with the Bird Blast, so make sure to avoid the front area of the monster when you're dodging it. By the way, if you're playing with other people, or Amaterasu happens to be targeting Tsukumo while doing this move, it actually provides a pretty big opening because it holds Amaterasu in place for a bit. Time to lick your chops and put a heavy hit in. <laughs> and then a variant of this move is the Forward Bird Laser. So while airborne, Amaterasu's beak glows once again while a halo forms on its back, and then the monster fires a sweeping laser while moving forward. You can avoid this by just dodging to the side. And then up next are the fire pillars. So with this move, Amaterasu slowly hovers in the air and then generates a halo of fire while summoning multiple fire pillars on the ground. Basically, you just need to look out for the pillars and then stay away from them. Don't touch them. <laughs> the good news is that this move actually holds Amaterasu in place for a while. So it's especially great for hitting Amaterasu with a big attack, especially if you can avoid the fire pillars. And then last but not least is the supernova. This one is pretty obvious because Amaterasu charges golden light and then forms not one, not two, but three halos above the monster. After that, it will release a powerful supernova shot down to the ground. This is actually the move that triggers the flash of inspiration to unlock the harpoon. Naturally, the harpoon is a pretty good counter against this one. And you'll definitely want to counter it because this can actually one-shot you. In other words, if you can't cancel it, just make sure to avoid it. <laughs> just stay away. It's kind of like looking at the sun. It's nothing but trouble. If you want to unlock Amaterasu permanently after beating the monster, just go to the Poet Lady at the very top of Minato by taking the elevator from the Crimson Treasury Shop. And then if you talk to her, she should have a side quest involving Amaterasu. Finish that and you will unlock the five star quest, Hunting Encore, Auspice of Minato, at the Chapter 4 map. Anyway, there you go. How to hunt the big piece of chicken, Amaterasu in Wild Hearts. As always, if you have any thoughts, questions, or even tips for other players, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. Once again, this is Sabi Asobi, and thank you for watching.